learned a lot about myself during this movement reset, and I really like the pacing of my last recap video where I jumped straight into the bullet journal, so I'm going to do that again. Here's the title page for chapter 5, Movement. I fell in love with the quote that I found online. It reads, Movement is a medicine for creating change in a person's physical, emotional, and mental states. And the quote is attributed to Carol Welch Barrel. Once again, I have a little table of contents of the exercises in this chapter and which ones I completed. I completed all of the exercises in every section except the explore section where you're asked to choose two or three to complete and I ended up choosing two. For the reaction exercise in the arrive section, I listened to myself read the personal story and you can access these audio recordings on my website. I jotted down a few things as I listened to the personal story and what really struck me was how many different forms of movement I've tried in the past. Things like dance classes or other fitness classes, dragon boat, ultimate frisbee, that sort of thing. I really loved to experiment with movement. I started getting an inkling, just a tiny, tiny whisper that I'm in a movement rut right now. And this is the theme that kept coming up for me during this chapter. I find that the more I do self-reflection, and you may notice this as well as you move through the book, when a whisper comes up, it gets more and more difficult to ignore it. So me feeling like I'm in a movement rut is going to be a recurring theme in terms of what I learned about myself this month. This is the first time my word cloud hasn't really been a source of creativity or inspiration. I didn't really have any ideas in terms of what I wanted to do for this word cloud, so I just jotted down a few words that came to mind as I thought about the topic of movement. Pendulum was an interesting exercise this time around because I found myself very meh about the topic of movement, which I don't think has been the case before when I've previously done this reset. All of my dots were kind of in the middle. I didn't really feel one way or the other. I'm not interested in the topic. I'm not disinterested in it. I don't necessarily enjoy talking about it or not enjoy talking about it. I just felt very flat when it came to this topic, which is something that surprised me. When I went through the observe section, I actually did it in order. So I did my seven days of self-observation and then I did the patterns exercise. But when it came to documenting these exercises in the bullet journal, I decided to use this one page for patterns. So these are things that I noticed about myself after completing a week of self-observation because I wanted to use an entire spread for my journal section. Instead of doing long form journal entries this month where I write everything in sentences, I wanted to do more of a table format, very similar to what you would see in a spreadsheet because I love spreadsheets. I love seeing all seven days laid out like this and this did help me identify some patterns. One thing being that my energy level was pretty consistent throughout the week but it wasn't very high at all and I did the same thing every single day as well basically a daily walk and cleaning in the condo. And because I didn't do anything else, that reinforced my feeling that I'm in a movement rut right now. The emotion that kept coming up for me as I reviewed my journal entries was boredom. I was bored of my routine, which is so strange because I loved my routine for the past I would say like two to three years during the pandemic, I developed this routine and it's been serving me very well. I have identified my routine many times as my source of strength, but I think it's time to switch things up. Next, we're moving into the two exercises I selected in the explore section, and I really let the arrive and the observe sections guide me in terms of what exercises I was interested in trying. I decided to do the little things exercise and also more of this. I started with little things, which basically involves making a list of tiny things you can do to get moving. I have many dips in my motivation and energy levels throughout the day, where I know I have things I want to do, but for some reason I can't think of any of them. This is where my task list helps, but sometimes I don't feel like doing any of those things either, and there are lots of things I enjoy doing that might not be on my task list. So I jotted down many little things that I can do in, say, five minutes or less. Some of these are a little bit longer, but most can be done within five minutes. So these are things like empty the dishwasher, do a sun salutation in terms of yoga, do five jumping jacks, take out the garbage, 
walk up and down a flight of stairs, flip through a favorite book, give Lulu a hug, wipe the kitchen counters, go out on the balcony and look at the sky. So these are just some of the examples of things that I wrote down, but if I ever am in need of something to get me moving, I can look at this list. I would happily give Lulu a hug at any time and that would involve me getting up, going to Lulu, picking her up, giving her a hug. I'm sure that would lift my spirits, which really helps in getting things moving for me. More of this is an exercise that involves listing ways of moving your body that you'll enjoy, that you'd like to try again or do more of, or that you'd like to try one day. So because I'm in a movement rut, I thought this would be a great exercise for me to list a few things I'm excited to try. I ended up having a hard time with this exercise. Of course, I thought of the things that I currently do. These are things like walking, stretching, dancing, shaking, and housework. So these are things that I do enjoy doing, but because I'm in a movement rut, none of these things were exciting to me. I did feel a little bit of energy around some of the movements that I wouldn't mind trying again. So these are things like yoga, which I haven't done in a very long time, rock climbing, aerial hoop, trampolining, frisbee, cartwheels and the list goes on. So these are some things that are giving me a little bit of energy and excitement as I look through the items on this list. I'm like, oh yeah, I would like to try that again. That got me excited to write down some new things, some movements that I haven't tried before. And this was again really tough. The only things that I wouldn't mind trying, but I'm not even that eager to try these things, are Zumba, bar class, indoor skydiving, disc golf and pilates there were a few things that i was interested in trying before that i'm no longer interested in things like bungee jumping and diving i think these are more adrenaline based activities that i'm not really that interested in anymore i'm not like chasing that adrenaline rush anymore so i did find this exercise pretty challenging because even though i feel like i'm in a movement rut i'm not sure what else i want to do it's going to take some experimentation to figure it out out, and maybe the experimentation is all I need. Maybe it's an ebb and flow where I need some novelty and then I can go back and happily be in my routine again. So that's another something that I learned about myself is that even when I'm very happy with something that could change and I could want something different in the future. That's a really useful lesson about myself is that I'm always changing, which is the whole point of this book. Next, we're moving into the connect section and I loved the memories exercise. I got the idea to look through my photos to see what forms of movement I enjoyed as a young child. I loved to climb as a young child and that's what I'm doing in this photo. I'm four years old here. But I enjoyed climbing things throughout my life up to now to this day I still enjoy climbing things so that was definitely a theme that came up for me and in the memories section I just wrote all of the things that I love about movement I wrote the same things over and over again in some cases for example stretching came up over and over again which was very interesting to me because I very rarely take the time to stretch anymore I just do tiny stretches when I get up and move around in the condo but I don't do any dedicated sessions where I stretch for five or ten minutes and maybe that's something I want to get back to. Next is disentangling and this was a hard one for me because I have gone through so many ups and downs when it comes to movement and my inner critic telling me I need to do more. I finally reached a place where I was at peace with my level of movement, listening to my body and feeling really good about the way I moved. But now it has kind of come full circle. It's not really so much my inner critic telling me I need to move more, but I think now it's truly my inner compass that says, you know what, you're in a bit of a movement rut. It's time to switch things up. I do want to feel strong and I feel like I have all of this like pent up energy or maybe I could describe it as an antsy feeling where I feel like I want to move more than I have been moving. It's a feeling that I want to challenge my body and to be strong. So I want to find ways of doing that, channeling this energy into different forms of movement and strength training without triggering my inner critic because my inner critic 
starts to get vocal very easily. And that brings us to the exercises that I like to put on one page, and that is perceptions and perspective. So I've talked about my inner critic already. She's still very vocal. She tells me that I was foolish to think that I was getting enough strength training from my daily routine, that I've rested for too long, that I've gotten lazy and complacent that I'm sedentary and that my health is at risk, that sort of thing. But then my inner best friend reminds me that we were in a global pandemic and I wrote an entire book during that time. So these are very valid reasons why I didn't try new classes or new forms of movement or go to the gym. I don't even like the gym in the first place. My inner best friend also reminded me that I go for long walks every day. I walk for around an hour to an hour and a half. So I'm definitely not sedentary. I'm moving around the condo. I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. I'm doing a lot of things. It's just that working out or trying new fitness classes isn't one of them right now, but it can be in the future. So my inner best friend gives me a more balanced perspective, and my inner best friend also appreciates my inner critic and the way my inner critic is trying to look out for us. The last exercise in the connect section is interconnections, and I laid this out similarly to last month because I really liked having just one little thought for each interconnection. And this was helpful because I realized that I do incorporate a lot of movement into my day and movement still helps me in many different ways. I just happen to be in a movement rut, but that's something that I can try to fix. Moving into the last section, which is reflect. Pendulum Redux, I had one main, main observation that came out of this, and that is that I no longer feel at peace with my relationship with movement, or at least I don't right now. I have felt at peace for quite a long time, which has been really nice. But at this very moment, I'm feeling a bit of stagnation, a bit of boredom with my routine, and as a result, I don't really feel at peace with my relationship with movement. There are a lot of things I want to try and some things I want to change. So this is actually a very valuable lesson, and I'm glad it happened for me because the pendulum is not intended to always be on one side. One side is not better than the other, and there's not a progression as well. There's no end goal that you're trying to progress to. The idea of the pendulum is that you go back and forth depending on where you're at. And I'm at peace with a lot of aspects of my life because I do so much inner work and self-reflection. But with movement, I'm not at peace right now. And this was something that I think was really important for me to recognize. I want to share the looking up statement that I came up with during this movement reset. And that is, I see myself as someone who enjoys moving in ways that help me feel flexible, limber, and strong. This really refers to all of that pent up energy that I have right now, all of that antsiness that I haven't been able to release just from my daily walks and even with the cleaning challenge which was quite intense i still have more energy and more antsiness that needs to come out and that really indicates to me that i might be moving too little right now even though i am doing things finally i summarized everything i learned about myself in the treasures exercise and i won't go through this in detail because i've already talked about many if not all of the items the last page in my bullet journal is a summary of all three times i did the movement reset the first time I did this reset was in May 2021, and at that time my looking up statement was, I see myself as someone who has a gentle and compassionate approach to movement and exercise. So I think by that statement you can kind of see what I was going through at the time, mainly struggling with a very vocal inner critic. By this time we were around a year into the pandemic, and I was really trying to integrate movement into my daily life, and I also started the practice of listening to my body, which is something that I was was very out of touch with before the pandemic. My second movement reset was in December of 2022, and my looking up statement was, I see myself as someone who listens to my body. After over a year of practicing listening to my body, I was finally getting the hang of it, and I felt really good about that. At the time of this reset, I was very at peace with my relationship with movement, and I also realized that dance came up for me a lot in terms of the ways I like to move, but I I don't like choreo, I don't like having to learn steps or memorize steps or try to do things perfectly because again that triggers my inner critic. 
So I decided to try ecstatic dance, which is a great fit for me, but for whatever reason, I haven't done it very often. That brings me to my third reset, which we've already talked about. When I look at these resets one after the other, it's really fascinating to see my ebbs and flows within the topic of movement. My inner critic and my inner best friend working to keep me at an equilibrium, pushing me to try new things, but also being comfortable in my daily routine. And I think this is the first time I've really truly seen an example of kind of like the absence of self, if you will. So this book is all about tuning into ourselves, but the ultimate, ultimate goal of this book is to show you that yourself is always changing and there really is no self to speak of. It's not one fixed entity. It is something that is always in flux, always changing, always the sum of many, many, many different parts. And I think this movement chapter really showed me that. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is how I felt about this chapter overall. I decided to give it a dark blue, which signifies that I had mixed feelings about it. I really did learn a lot about myself in this chapter, but it was a little bit uncomfortable because because I realized that what I loved last year is no longer what I love today. My routine served me well, but it's time to switch things up. And while I love change, it's also really uncomfortable. So knowing that I'm going to be pushing myself to make some changes is a hard thing for me, but I'm willing to do it and I'm happy to do it. Especially now that I've dug deep into my beliefs about movement, I feel this internal motivation that's deeper than just, I should do this. It's a true desire to want to make a change. That is going to be it for my movement recap video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to be starting the home chapter next. I'll be posting the intro video for that chapter in the next day or two. I'll see you very soon in that video. Until then, please take care and bye for now.